afternoon. I'm Kevin Jano with Deloitte Consulting. And I'm excited to have this panel here today to talk about API governance, but specifically consistency and reusability. So all the way to my far right, we have Sanjeev Sinha. He's a managing director in our Deloitte commercial practice. Next to him, we have Mr. Rob Brown, chief technology officer of US Citizenship and Immigration Services. And last but not least, we have Mr. Akil Butt, director of engineering for Optimos. So before I begin, there's a couple key initiatives that we want to focus on when we're talking about API governance, is that, and that's API management and API governance. API management is simply allowing the APIs to be available, secure, and consumable. Governance is really doing the right thing at the right time with the right people. So Akil, in your experience, talk to me about how important governance is to rolling out an API strategy. So um, I think to answer the question, I would like to set the context first. So I mean, from a USCIS perspective, since we have Rob here, um, the, the problem statement was essentially that uh, we have multiple different development teams developing in different languages, totally different platforms, like no uniformity across the board. Uh, and essentially from, uh, like you mentioned, API management and API governance, API management helped, uh, from a product perspective, Apigee helped us bring those APIs together. Now from a governance perspective, I think the critical piece that we followed was to essentially follow the external approach. So every API, consider it external. When you consider it external, you automatically start to put this streamlined governance process around it. So essentially, even if you have an internal service and you eventually want to make it external, you can easily do that. Um, but from a governance perspective, there are different tiers where you can do that as far as streamlining the process so the developer doesn't need to worry about it. Um, that will essentially be uh, at the product level, based on your product strategy. How do you want to govern access to your APIs? Essentially following the same CI/CD pipeline model around your governance as well. So from an Apigee perspective, your shared flows should be uh, managed the same way as we're managing our API proxies. This way, the developers don't need to worry about any of the security policies or anything like that. They just create API proxies, us as the op teams, uh, we have environment level configuration that will essentially govern them on a whole. Great. And so Rob, you're, you're forefront and center on the mission at USCIS to really transform their digital experience, allowing external applicants to really plug into the back end, uh, and you're doing that with API first mindset. So describe to me your journey that you've been on, really driving the agency to adopt that API architecture. Sure, uh, so thank you Akil. Akil sort of set the stage a bit, uh, so thank you Akil. Um, but I want to expand a bit on sort of the disparate nature, again, being in a government agency, multiple teams, multiple portfolios, uh, different, almost different sort of submissions. Uh, so very rogue, very disparate groups with no sense of standardization, governance, and really just sort of throwing APIs or even just having essentially open database connections for other internal and sometimes even external data consumers. So trying to wrangle uh, all of these sort of disparate rogue mentalities, different technologies, um, has been a bit of a challenge, and we're still going through this journey. We have started um, to apply certain levels of sort of technical governance and management around standards. Having common swagger pages and leveraging open API specs has been a big step forward. And from a journey perspective, now we've got a million different swagger pages uh, for different portfolios and different teams. So it becomes a little bit challenging now, uh, but a better challenge is how do we start to wrangle all of these different swagger pages into some common entity and management platform. Um, the so marketplace experience. Yeah, uh, trying to develop you know, a good marketplace experience, uh, as, but more importantly from an integration perspective, because we have all of these different uh, essentially business capability domains at play, how do we start to manage these integrations? So coming up with proper working agreements between these teams, so there's a good clean understanding of what that data is in the form of an API that's being presented to either receive or produce um, some form of an event. So we've done that, taken various approaches. Uh, Chris Richardson uh, comes to mind as we've built out sort of microservice canvases and trying to leverage that as a, a model moving forward to determine uh, and then educate and market uh, amongst all of these different uh, uh, domain areas uh, what is that bounded context and what are those ingress egress mechanisms? Great. Yeah, so you talked a little bit about the patterns and anti-patterns um, with this whole API first mindset. So Sanjeev, in your experience as an API transformational leader within the firm, what has been your experience in, in addressing some of those anti-patterns? I would say 
what Rob mentioned is around proliferation of API in the organization. And things around is, is, a, is a problem which organizations are observing now. And if they are like mature organization observing now and those organizations which are getting on this journey will very soon observe those problems. In our approach and in our experience, what I have seen very successful, once we take the API conversation to a business level, because at the end of the day, IT is supporting business or enabling business. So abstract it at a business level, instead of having conversation within the technology group or under CIO's organization, have this conversation in the board. Have this conversation with those individuals who really owns the business and start from there. If the things trickles down from top to bottom for a specific business unit, and I can give you an example of HR. Employee is a very common data or very common API which is needed in internal business process or for external business process. But if you sit down with a VP or SVP or somebody who is a higher up in the executive and say like, how about if we create one API for employee and let everyone access that API. There will be variation of data elements, et cetera, but it will be one. So what I have seen very successful in addition to setting a right governance and uh, putting the right training in place, publishing the document out, having this conversation at a real business unit or business owner will help a lot in controlling the proliferation of APIs. Yeah, a couple key words that I focused on when you were talking about it was the business side. Um, so sometimes we run into this situation where we are driving tech so hard and so fast, sometimes we forget about the business is, is lagging behind a little bit. So Rob, in your experience at USCIS, um, how have you been able to architect a solution whereby you're allowing third parties access into the backend systems for all those external parties applying for benefits? Sort of evolving from, again, you know, multiple portfolios doing maybe 50% uh, redundant type work, uh, we took an approach uh, from a domain-driven design perspective, again, focusing on what core business capabilities exist to deliver essentially USCIS benefits. We essentially created those domains or services, aligned specific portfolios and application development teams, as well as cross-functional services to be, again, aligned to these core business capabilities. We then organized ourselves to be having a good ITPM or a good tech lead directly associated with a business service owner responsible for the requirements for that business domain. That has actually been pretty important as we move forward in developing those API products internally that then get exposed externally where we can really actually realize the full workflow of delivering benefits. It has also provided us with a mechanism to provide almost a factory-like mentality in our development and delivery mechanisms that are, again, keenly focused on that bounded context of business capability that we can focus on delivering APIs. As we move forward in developing third-party APIs for our external consumers, uh, we are, we've engaged with um, and have started to engage with industry. We do that in the form of RFIs uh, to get a sense of what does the industry need, what they want, open competition, and we're internally at a stage now where should we go full California style and have everything wide open to what level of governance and, and structure do we need from just basic security and vetting our potential consumers of those APIs and you know, even limits on uh, file sizes. So we're still going through this journey, but I think you know, taking that step back and organizing the OIT components uh, directly with these business capabilities, having direct relationships with the business and accountability has actually started to provide us that clear understanding of what we're going to produce, what products get produced. It's clearly evident that it is a journey. It's, it's not a point in time, it's a process by which you have to ensure that you're doing the right things at the right time. Sanjeev, in your experience, how can we sustain, grow, and scale in this environment with this whole API mindset and microservices architecture? I think taking a holistic approach around governance processes. What happens, people get a very deep into API and right away they get into a tool uh, into implementation. 
But taking a step back and putting the right structure in place, holistic governance, which includes a sponsorship from business unit we are serving, a sponsorship from the IT where we are enabling, and co-ownership and co-partnership on API journey is very, very critical. Along with that, uh, I would also say, uh, think about API journey not just defining and working with business, but really taking advantage of the CI, CD, and uh, automation around it, automation and self-serving. If you expose API to external consumer, there's no way you can um, ask them to onboard one API in three months. The onboarding process has to be very, very shortened. Realizing the benefit of API in terms of business enablement while working with end user is critical. And that's why the entire governance process, keeping in mind the uh, business benefit and realization is very important. Right. Yeah, so as you can see, API mindset, API architecture, it's not an all technology solution. There's a lot of business side strategy that has to be taken into account, as you can see from our panelists. So I want to like to thank you for, uh, for joining me today. This was a great discussion. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to talking next.